Alright guys, we are going to get this cranking. Of course that's from yesterday, so don't pay attention to that. And yes, our children are still for sale. I'm going to turn the light out just to see if I can see that a little better. Um, maybe you can see a little better as well. Um, nah, I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to turn half of them on. Okay, so, please forgive me. Um, last week we were talking about uh, the New Deal, Roosevelt's New Deal, and exactly what the New Deal um, was supposed to do. If you remember, we said that the New Deal was supposed to um, do three things. It was supposed to offer relief, and, and that would be in the form of checks, jobs programs. We talked about the CCC. We talked about the, um, the WPA and things like that that gave jobs to people so that unemployment would not become um, or would not continue. Again, even though Roosevelt um, is able to lower unemployment, he never really gets it below 15%, but it was better than it was um, in 1932 when he became president. Again, recovery, um, things like the Agricultural Adjustment Act, um, programs designed to get industry back to work, put people back to work in industry, and of course all of those were supposed to stimulate um, the economy so that the depression would come to an end. And again, Roosevelt does end the depression. He is um, able to keep that promise, but that promise is really kept by um, the end of World War II. And then the third R would be reform, um, to change the laws, to change structure, to change um, primarily in the case of the banking system, the way banks are operated, the way banks were run. Uh, but also uh, the stock market. The stock market crash of 1929 really opened a lot of people's eyes and helped them to realize that the way um, the stock market was being run was um, not really um, the best thing for the American people and for the American economy. So um, here we go again, FDR, the New Deal, and then some of the acts that are related to relief, recovery, and reform. And let's just point out a couple. The Civilian Conservation Corps we talked about already, um, the Public Works Administration, the Tennessee Valley Authority, and also another, um, almost a W or PWA, but the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. Then recovery, um, the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the Federal Housing Administration, um, another Agricultural Adjustment Act in 1937, and then reform. Um, things that were intended to um, deal with labor, things that were intended to, um, to give people uh, unemployment insurance, those sorts of things, the, the Social Security Act, the Glass-Steagall um, Banking Act, the Securities Exchange Act, of course, had to do with, um, uh, with the stock market. So... Can't you read? Can't you read? Why do you have two books? I did not read my book. So, that was one of your classmates that can't read and decided he would interrupt me while I'm doing what I'm doing. So what happened with African Americans during the New Deal? We know that during um, we know that during the, the Jim Crow era, we know that during the Depression, African Americans do not fare very well. They are um, socioeconomically at the bottom of the scale, and um, it it really is not much better for African Americans during the New Deal. It's somewhat better. But a lot of these programs they don't benefit from. We talked about the Agriculture Administration Act um, last week and how it benefited land-owning farmers. It did not benefit sharecroppers. It did not benefit the tenant farmer. And because of that, many African Americans did not benefit from that. Um, one that, that does employ a lot of African Americans is the WPA or the Works Public Administration. 
Um, but, you know, we're talking about manual labor, building roads, airports, digging ditches, those sorts of things. Um, and it, it did put many African Americans to work doing those sorts of things. Now, uh, Franklin Roosevelt actually had what became known as a the Black Cabinet. It was Roosevelt's Black Cabinet. And they actually um, were men and women who worked with President Roosevelt to address the plight of African Americans. Um, and I'm going to give you the names of four. There were more than this, but four. Mary McLeod Bethune, um, if you've ever heard of the um, University of Beth uh, Bethune-Cookman down in Daytona, uh, in HUBC, she was um, one of the founders of that. She also was a special advisor on minority affairs for um, President Roosevelt. She advised him on what was going on with African Americans, not just African Americans, but all minorities in the United States. Clark Foreman. Clark Foreman, interestingly enough, was um, was not African American. He was actually white. He becomes a special advisor on the economic status of Negroes. Um, so even though he is um, a white male, um, and he's actually from Georgia, um, his family was um, actually the founding family um, for the Atlanta Constitution, um, very much in favor of Jim Crow, very um, much um, in favor of segregation. Clark Foreman kind of um, ditches that. He um, decides that that is not how he wants to live his life, and he, he becomes one who fights against segregation and, and fights for uh, rights for all. Um, Robert Weaver um, is an advisor to the Secretary of the Interior. Secretary of the Interior deals with things that go on in the United States. Um, and then William Hasty becomes a special advisor on um, race relations, you know, how the different races are interacting with each other. And here's um, those four people, Ms. Bethune, Mr. Foreman, Mr. Weaver, and Mr. Hasty. All are very um, influential in Roosevelt's cabinet and all go on to live a very productive lives um, apart from being a part, sounded weird, apart from um, being in Roosevelt's administration. Um, so, in Georgia we have um, several different governors who are what we call the New Deal governors. They're governors during the Depression, they're governors while um, Roosevelt's New Deal is being implemented and being carried out. So Richard B. Russell, it's actually Richard B. Russell Jr. We've talked about him. We know that um, he is one who worked to reorganize the government. Um, he, he wanted the government run more like a business and was able to accomplish that. He's able to, um, to really turn things around and get things um, really more productive for the state government. He um, leaves the governor's office. He is elected to the U.S. Senate and serves there for 38 years. There's actually a, um, a Senate office building in Washington, D.C. that is named after Senator Russell, the Richard B. Russell Senate building, where senators have their offices. Um, Eugene Talmadge, we've talked about Eugene Talmadge. We're going to talk a lot more about Eugene Talmadge. Um, he was a piece of work. He was anti-New Deal. He did not like the fact that um, the New Deal had come to Georgia. And so um, he works against the New Deal. He becomes Georgia's governor in 1932 and 1934. Um, he's actually elected again after that, but during 32 and 34, again, he's elected. He serves until 1936. And he is very much against uh, President Roosevelt's New Deal um, and, and works and fights against bringing those into Georgia. Um, Ureth, or Ed Rivers, um, works with Roosevelt. He's very much a Roosevelt Democrat, very much in favor of the New Deal, and he works to increase spending. Um, public housing becomes a thing. My mother 
actually lived in a public housing um, development in Atlanta that was a result of the work of Ed Rivers. Um, he was a very, fairly successful governor, but unfortunately his term ends um, with some corruption problems. Talmadge is re-elected in 1940. Rivers is elected in 1936. Serves for two years. Herman Talmadge, or Eugene Talmadge, rather, is elected, um, re-elected in 1940. Um, and he actually begins to use some New Deal programs. The people of Georgia spoke, and apparently Talmadge heard, um, that they were in favor of the New Deal. They actually loved Roosevelt and were in favor of the New Deal, so he began to use some of those um, he does some really stupid things. Um, for example, um, he took state officials, or he removed state officials from office who were working to integrate Georgia's colleges and universities. As a result, UGA and all of the state schools, all the state colleges, lost their accreditation, which means their diplomas were worthless. Um, that They were not accredited. They were not given the stamp of approval uh, because of the fact that Governor Talmadge meddled um, in university business. Ellis Arnold reforms the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents is the group that is in charge of Georgia's um, education, particularly higher education, colleges and universities, and he also reforms state prisons. He um, um, ultimately does away with Georgia's chain gang and uh, really does a lot to, to make Georgia a better place. The poll tax dies under Ellis Arnold. Remember, the poll tax had been aimed at um, keeping black folks from voting in Georgia, and not just in Georgia, but in the South and other states as well. Ellis Arnold gets rid of that in Georgia. Um, and it's under Ellis Arnold that a new state constitution is written. I could have you read that new state constitution, but I do like you. So I'm not going to do that. But, um, you know, it does create some changes within um, the state. There's Richard B. Russell, Jr., Eugene Talmadge, right there, um, Ureth Ed Rivers, or E.D., and then Ellis Arnold. I believe that Ellis Arnold has a statue out um, on the Capitol grounds in Georgia, and I, Eugene Talmadge might, but I'm pretty sure Ellis Arnold does, which tells you a little bit about how effective he was. Let's go back, talk about Eugene Talmadge for us just a little bit. You can see from the picture, he, uh, he was a doodle. Um, very charismatic. People loved to listen to him. People loved, um, particularly the farmer, loved Eugene Talmadge for what he was able to accomplish for them. And, uh, you know, he's, he's elected governor. He had always said he could win any election um, in any place that didn't have a streetcar. And he was right. Um, he is Roosevelt's greatest political rival in the state of Georgia. Um, again, he's very powerful. He's very colorful. Um, he's very controversial. And he's involved in Georgia politics from 1926 until he dies in 1946. And his death is something that we'll look at when we begin to look at post-World War II. Very interesting um, situation is, re is created because of Talmadge's death. Um, and Georgia found itself with not one, not two, but three governors at the same time. And it's an episode called the Three Governors um, episode. So, um, he... Um, He's elected as the Commissioner of Agriculture, um, serves three terms as that. He's also elected um, and serves three terms as governor. He's actually elected four times, um, but is only able to serve three of his terms again. He dies before he takes office for the last time. And farmers loved him. They were passionate about Eugene Talmadge. And he really went out and fought for farmers and the issues that they face, not just as agricultural commissioner, but as the governor as well. Um, 
one thing that, that Talmadge was noted for is the fact that he didn't think African Americans should have civil rights. He, he fought every effort um, to give African Americans more civil rights um, and, and honestly was a bigot. He was a racist. Um, he believed in low taxes and limited government, which is the exact opposite of some of the New Deal. Um, it's the, the exact opposite of um, what FDR is trying to do. FDR is putting more and more government into um, people's lives, and, and Talmadge is certainly opposed to that. Um, farmers loved him. A lot of other Georgians loved him. Um, but because he's opposed to the New Deal, because of some of his feelings and um, sayings against um, civil rights, uh, a lot of negative publicity comes out for the state, and it ultimately hurts Talmadge politically. Um, Ed Rivers um, becomes the governor. He is the only person to ever defeat Eugene Talmadge in an election. Um, and that's significant. Um, 1936, Ed Rivers, E.D., Ureth, whatever you want to call him, is elected the governor of Georgia. Talmadge is not done with. We're not done with Talmadge yet, though. Um, Talmadge is still extremely popular, and in fact, um, there were some people who were pushing um, Talmadge to run against FDR for president in 1936. Um, of course, that doesn't happen. He loses the Georgia governor's race and um, is pretty much done for as far as national politics are concerned. Um, for many years, particularly when Roosevelt and Talmadge were alive, you had people who were supportive of big government. Um, those would be Democrats that supported the New Deal. And then you had people who didn't support big government. They would be more pro-farmer, and they supported Talmadge. The, the interesting thing is, um, or one of the interesting things is, Roosevelt, when he would visit um, Warm Springs, would actually go out and drive through the countryside. He would stop and talk to people as he met them. He talked to farmers. And people in Georgia absolutely loved uh, FDR. My, my father... Um, again, was a kid during the Depression, became a teenager and, and of course an adult as the Depression is coming to a close, but he loved FDR. Um, he was um, a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, primarily because of uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Um, told one of y'all, one class yesterday, hey, Avi, stop. Um, told one class yesterday that we would be looking at some um, Dr. Seuss cartoons, this is actually one of those, and it's about Eugene Talmadge. You see Eugene Talmadge here. Um, he's got a buzzard sitting on his shoulder, and you can see across the buzzard is race hatred. And the quote is, you can keep your American eagle, I got a bird all my own. And that's how Georgia and Talmadge were viewed as backward and racist. We have this wall of racism that has been built around Georgia and Talmadge rules with an iron fist. He rules with, in this case, a whip. Um, so we'll look at more uh, cartoons from Dr. Seuss as they have to do with um, not just Georgia, but World War II in particular. He, he did a, a lot of cartoons, drew a lot of cartoons. Um, just some pictures. Uh, there's actually a parole hearing for someone who had beaten um, a black couple to death, um, and this is Governor Talmadge hearing um, from um, from one of the attorneys. Um, of course, he ruled in favor of whoever had done the beating. Um, and again, there's Talmadge's young man. Um, another picture of him at that parole hearing, and then um, the death of Eugene Talmadge in 1946. Quite a shock, and again, it. it um, is it, 
it's bad for a couple of reasons. Um, Eugene Talmadge actually dies of cirrhosis of the liver. He drank himself to death. Um, he obviously had a, a, a problem with alcohol. Um, but when he died, Georgia was left without a governor. He had been elected governor, but he was what is called the governor-elect. This was the first election where Georgia elected a lieutenant governor or like a vice governor. Neither one of them had taken their oath of office when, um, when Talmadge dies, and so the problem becomes who's actually the governor. Um, and they can't figure it out, and it really makes Georgia the laughing stock of the world. Um, people all over the world were looking at Georgia and, and what uh, was going on with this three governors controversy. And that's it. Um, that's the end of the New Deal. We will um, do some things this week, as we've already discussed um, yesterday, you know, some, um, uh, some reading about the uh, Great Depression, the causes and effects of that, some questions that um, I'm asking you to, to work on. And again, you've got to email those to me. And then um, on uh, Thursday, I believe it is, there's some reading that you have to do in your textbook and again, some questions that go along with that. And then on Friday, something that will be a little different, will be a little more fun for you. Um, those pictures from the Depression where you're, you're supposed to write a description of two to three sentence description of, of what's going on in that picture from your perspective. What do you think is going on? Um, don't forget, on Friday, your summary is due, um, and that should be turned in using or submitted using turnitin.com. Ray Bell, would you stop, please? Um, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be done with this in a couple of weeks, and we can get back to um, our interaction that we have uh, on a daily basis. If not, um, you know, we'll, we'll do what we have to do. Um, love you guys. Hope you have a, a, a productive couple of weeks and then a, you know, a nice spring break. Um, hopefully we'll be back together um, in that first week in April. Thanks. Have a good day. I got to walk over there and turn this off. <laughs>